my pleasure to invite our next keynote speaker, Mr. Yashish Thaya. He is chairman and CEO of PB Fintech Limited. Mr. Yashish Thaya founded Policy Bazaar in 2008. He is the chairman and CEO of PB Fintech, the parent company of Policy Bazaar and Paisa Bazaar. Before launching his entrepreneurial journey, he was the MD of eBookers.com, a pan-European online travel distributor, which was also an FTSE 250 company listed on NASDAQ. He has also spent few years as a management consultant with Bain and Company in their London office. I would now request Mr. Dhaya to please deliver a speech on looking back to reimagine the future, how the life insurance industry will shape up in next decade. Insurance industry is something which is always uh, attractive to many of us working in the financial services industry. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me over. I guess. Uh, as we delve into start a bit from the past, uh, you know, we, when we started, there was uh, generally nothing called a term insurance product in the market. And so we, we, we as a life insurance industry uh, were selling a lot of products, but uh, they were mostly, uh, you know, distribution led and uh, it was more of a push industry with the, you know, the consumer having a very low understanding of what they were purchasing. So if you asked 100 consumers, uh, you know, what is the product that you have purchased? Very few of them were able to, uh, you know, articulate what it was that they had purchased. And what this somewhat led to was a lot of dissonance uh, in the consumer's mind where there was high churn and uh, we all, uh, you know, know that detail. I guess what's happened in the last 13, 14 years as I look back uh, over this time period, is that uh, the consumer has started getting involved. The consumer has become a lot more aware. You see that across the industry. You see that in uh, various financial services products, including their uh, you know, involvement in the stock market, their involvement in the mutual funds. And within the mutual funds, you know, a lot of interest in the direct mutual funds. And so there's been a lot of consumer activation, if you would, or a consumer awareness, if you would. Now, the highest researched product by the consumer on their own uh, has in this period become term insurance, followed by health insurance, followed by many other products. And thus, that's a very interesting uh, change. And that's what I would use to kind of segue into the future. Uh, because as I think about it, consumer awareness, consumer engagement will keep increasing. It cannot go down. Uh, and, and what that implies is the consumer is going to be more and more in power and the consumer will purchase those products which are more useful to him or her. And thus we need to really think hard about ourselves as consumers and what products make sense for us. Uh, today, as an industry, what I understand is we have almost one and a half million people selling insurance along with lots of banks, et cetera, et cetera. There are, uh, from whatever I understand, 93,000 people who sell mutual funds. Uh, but the mutual funds take up is, is very significant still. And so that's what, you know, if you, if you were to think about it, and if you were to align yourself to the future, see, one thing is we can close our eyes and say, hey, you know what, we'll see when this future happens. Today, what's going on is going on. And that is the way it will be. But the second way is, we try to align ourselves with that future and see what can we do about it and how can we benefit from it and how can we be before uh, either either we be the change agent or we at least be ready for that change. So as I look at it, I think protection as a category, which is term insurance, will definitely be big. Uh, and various mechanisms of that, whether that is uh, a term with health, term with critical illness, term with return of premium, without return of premium, with various combinations will definitely be a big part of the industry. I guess the second big part of the industry would actually be pensions. And I know today the, the law is not absolutely favorable towards uh, uh, the pensions products within, uh, within the insurance category. However, laws change over time and they always become fair. So I think pensions is going to be a big category that will come in the form of deferred annuities, annuities. Now, yes, a lot of distributors will come in and say, hey, but, you know, in, in, a, in an annuity product, 
my my payout is very little i guess that is not the consumer's problem uh that is uh, somewhere uh, you know the industry's problem and the industry needs to solve for that and uh, uh the consumer cannot pay an unfair price uh just because you know the industry can't solve for it uh or or and, and the consumer will keep paying that price till the consumer kind of becomes a little more aware and a little more engaged so i guess we got to think about that as we think of uh, you know wealth management products i think uh, so I, i i do believe pensions is a big is a big need uh, planning costs for children is a big need and uh, you know even saving for buying a house etc are a big need so see here is how i think about it if i had an amount of money which i had no time frame whatsoever for when i needed it so okay so let me let me step back uh i have always invested in fixed deposits and that is not because i'm stupid and i want to be beaten by inflation that is because historically uh, my costs have always been such that they've been around the corner and i have never had savings historically if i look at the last 14 years i've always been in a situation where there is a particular date by which that money has to be paid either for children's school fees or you know a particular cost that has to be incurred and so when when your goal is so close that it's one two years away uh i guess you are going to stay towards fixed um side as your goals start becoming 10 years 15 years that is exactly where you know something like an insurance can come into play or if you want security from a long term uh you know perspective then again insurance can come in, uh, come into play i guess if you had an amount of capital which you had no particular need for which could just be there which you are saying i just wanted to keep growing then obviously you would just go into you know your direct mutual funds or go directly into uh, you know index funds and uh, keep it that way so I, i guess it's a bit dependent on the individual's profile right and i uh, i guess uh, you guys know this much better than i do and i think that's exactly how the industry will transform because that's what's in the consumer's interest uh i don't know what the format is do you do you want me to kind of uh, just uh, speak for uh, you know for the length of the of the program or would you have some q and a here dimple if you were to come in uh, i is this going to be a q and a kind of format or is it going to be just a uh, you just want me to speak because i think i've i've spoken about the future <laughs> so uh, definitely i can invite you in is we will quickly run one poll also and i would request all the viewers to maximum uh, do the polling for the questions we have related questions to the insurance industry that you just spoke about so we can run poll also sir uh, i request participants to please type well, in the chat box you know i usually yeah i usually prefer engagement but otherwise i ca- i can keep speaking that's that's fine if you want me to speak for another 10 15 minutes i can do that but you know i i kind of the gist of what i had to say as i said basically it's it's going to be about protection is going to be about pensions is going to be about a little bit of child planning uh and uh, and some goal based events and i guess that's what the insurance industry has to align itself to yes sir so i would request participants to please put in the q and a's and win prizes also we have attractive attractive prizes for people who are putting in questions also and uh, i think this is a uh, this is a not to miss opportunity that we have specialist from the industry mr yashish nayya sir with us and i request people to please put in the questions in the chat box and we would be pleased to answer so i guess I while, that- while we are at it one of the things that's going to happen uh, is you know i could i could talk a bit about embedded insurance i could talk a bit about data based insurance see, today the approach uh, we take uh, while see insurance is a risk product right so one of the big things and and this is something that we as an industry historically have sort of not remembered so well that is actually a risk product it cannot be sold to everybody uh, and risk needs to be assessed before selling insurance uh, we we historically seen it as an investment product but as we look at risk uh the risk can be ad- ad- addressed from various data sources and uh, of course there are people's declarations there but as your national digital health mission develops a lot of health data is going to start flowing in uh from uh, people's uh, credit behavior you can get a lot of uh, you know credit credit has a lot of uh, alignment with long term uh, uh, life risk 
of people. Uh, from their income behavior, stability of income behavior, you can again get a lot of data. So I guess a lot of heuristics are going to get used here besides just um, age, uh, which is used today in determining, uh, you know, who qualifies, who doesn't qualify. And I expect uh, the large format, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, platforms, whether it's a payment gateway platform, messaging platform, etc., to start to collate some of that data within themselves, even perhaps a Google or a Facebook would have a lot more of such data and them being able to pre-qualify people who could receive insurance or even pre-price for them uh, basis insurance companies. I see a lot of, you know, what you would call database underwriting rather than uh, just age-based underwriting happening. And again, you know, I think uh, that's nothing for us as a, as a community to be worried about. Uh, we have to essentially get access to that data. And hence, if I was a distributor today or I was a set of distributors, I would be working with the government in making sure that um, that data access is not denied to legitimate distributors because or advisors, because to provide that advice, they need access to that data and uh, with consumer consent, of course. So I guess that's that's another direction that the, uh, you know, uh, that the industry will take without a doubt. Thank you, Yashish, sir. Sure for uh, delivering wonderful, uh, uh, sharing your wonderful thoughts on insurance industry. I'm sure all the viewers who are viewing on the other screen are benefiting from the thoughts that you have just shared. Thank you. You're I, I'm quickly running up the poll on the, uh, in the insurance. Sure. Yeah. I request all the, uh, all the people who are attending this uh, event today to please participate in the poll. I would also like to announce the answers at the end. And we will get to know what maximum people are thinking on same. So I'm just announcing the poll questions. The poll will be there on your screen. So a lot of people are also, uh, yeah, sir, we have started getting a lot of questions. People are asking, how reliable is to buy an online policy? How reliable is it is to it buy an online policy? Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, see, uh, I think individuals do require uh, to understand what they are purchasing. And uh, from that perspective, I do agree with you that uh, having an advisor is, is helpful uh, in the sense that the advisor can, uh, you know, probably clarify any doubts uh, that an individual may have. So buying in a hurry without uh, seeking any advice whatsoever uh, is at least an in insurance. I would uh, not suggest it quite yet. I would say unless, unless a person is like, supremely confident, right? It depends on the, on the, on the individual. But if you are not very well versed with all the terminology in insurance, I would certainly say you must speak with somebody before you purchase a product. And uh, that can happen uh, via a trained person on a contact center. That can happen via a trained person who physically visits you. I guess all of that is absolutely feasible. And I do believe there is a lot of value uh, in having that advice just because otherwise you could be surprised, right? When you purchase the policy, you could be surprised later on. From a uh, claims perspective as well, I think it's helpful to uh, you know have uh, some kind of uh, organization or some kind of people helping you in the claim process because otherwise it can be a cumbersome process. It is very easy to say you know you can just buy and you will get your claim. Uh, you know I see claims day in and day out, and uh, you know thousands of claims every month, and there is a process that needs to be run. So having somebody reliable who can follow up and make sure your claim is paid is, is genuinely helpful. Uh, and, uh, you know, so th that's, that's my view. Uh, thank you so much, sir. There are many questions that you are getting, but we will have to limit, but I will have some more questions for you, sir. Sure. One I company. Understand. Yes. One company offers multiple insurance plans for the same purpose, which creates jargon for advisors to suggest to clients. So it be, really becomes a question for the client, the advisors, who, want, who wish to suggest insurance to their clients. Can you please throw some light on the same, sir? See, uh, one would have to get into the detail, but when I speak with companies, and I obviously speak with quite a few, uh, they usually have a purpose for each plan. Yes, they do have, uh, you know, different plans, but, and, and why do insurance companies come up with these plans? I mean, think about it. Insurance companies usually do not come up with the plans by themselves. They are either listening to the consumer or they're listening to the distributor who says, I would like a product somewhat like this. The other thing that happens is there is innovation happening all the time. 
Uh, see, I'm not trying to justify the activity. I'm trying to kind of explain the activity. So what happens is company A creates a product. Six months later, company B creates a different product. And you know, then uh, uh, advisors or people like us keep start telling company A that, look, company B's product is better than yours. And so then company A goes and creates the same product as company B or a similar product or maybe a slightly superior product. And so that in that, in that cycle of innovation, multiple sets of products get created. And, and sometimes these products work, sometimes they don't work. But you know, I, I do agree that if you take uh, all the products that a company has, very few of them yield the results. But that is not honestly, if a consumer company could choose which five of its products are going to work best and only keep those, they might actually wish to do that. But sometimes you have to try with 20 products to get to those five that will work. Uh, you know, we, we ourselves see, we have, we have quite a good understanding of the consumer and hence uh, in that, you know, 20 is to five ratio, we might have a ratio of 20 is to 16. So if we bring on 16, 20 products, 16 of them will somewhat succeed. But, you know, still it is not a guarantee. And many times products do fail. So uh, I guess it's in making sure that they have some successful products that people try out multiple ones. And uh, yes, I do agree for products that are not working, they should be churned out faster. Uh, but look, nothing in this world is perfect. Uh, but I, I, that is, that is that's, a, that's, a, that's a piece I will agree with that, uh, you know, if a company has a product which has been lying there for the last three years and not really selling, it's better to discontinue it. But, you know, in that also there's a catch. And I'll explain this. Sometimes these latent products become successful later on because, you know, somebody finds out that, look, there is something they were missing about the communication to the consumer and they've just figured it out. And then the, I've, I've had so many conversations with CEOs where they say, oh, we, in our stack, we have this product is lying around. It's not doing anything. It's very close to what you are asking for. So I guess, I guess it takes all types. But I, I would say as an, as an advisor, you have to select your two, three products which really work for you and not worry about the rest. Uh, yes, consumers will ask some questions around them. And uh, that, 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 is, that, that itself is a very, very aware consumer. But uh, you know, that, is, that is part of the, of the task. But you principally have to focus on two, three, which are really working for you. Thank you so much, uh, yes, sir. There are so many questions we are still getting, like the penetration of insurance industry in India. There are challenges which people face at the time of discharge during, you know, in medical insurance. There are so many questions. I think uh, people wish to learn so much about insurance industry. They have got some Google today. Uh, but if you can throw some light on this last question, and then probably we would like to stop. Questions. I think uh, I think the discharge problem is genuinely. Uh, you've seen, I've kind of answered all your questions quite straightforwardly, uh, not from a policy bazaar perspective or trying to, you know, just do something. I think that genuinely is not the insurance industry's problem. I know it's a consumer problem, but I believe that is actually caused by the medical fraternity because uh, uh, please appreciate those delays are, are not coming from the insurance side in most cases uh, because once the, you know, uh, uh, those delays sometimes tend to be from the hospital side and mostly tend to be from the hospital side. That's what I have seen. Uh, there are, um, I, I think, over-treatment, overcharging, uh, sometimes incorrect billing is a significant part because it's a very simple thing. There's a conflict of interest here, right? The hospital is going to get paid. The insurance company is going to, get, going to pay. And if the customer stays in the hospital one extra day, the hospital is going to gain the insurance companies good between the insurance company and the customer. Somebody's going to lose out. So you can see the conflict of interest playing out and who's interested is in to delay the settlement. Uh, I guess, um, yeah, I shouldn't say anything more controversial than that. Thank you, Naya, sir. Thank you so much for being present on this forum today. I know it's kind of a virtual event and we would have experienced probably a better interaction, you know, if would have if would have, uh, would have been an offline event. But I'm sure this is succeeding. And today on Saturday morning, again, we have around 3,700 people who are hearing you, sir. Thank you so much for being present here and sharing your thoughts on insurance industry. It is one of the industry which we have been seeing over years. And this is indispensable part of a financial advisors or financial industry. 
So thank, thank you, you thank much. you once uh, again on behalf of the be here. I wish we had more time for Q and A, and I wish yes, I had something less about the future than then got into the Q and A faster. <laughs> But thank you so much. I wish that we get to hear soon on various platforms when we, uh, when AFM starts to uh, share knowledge to its associates. I I wish to see you again and again, sir. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Reach out today and let's do it professionally.